Hi. I'm here to talk about making music with mason jars today. I'd like to thank Mr. Fixmer for nudging me to make this video to help supplement the, the long distance learning plan that we're all trying to deal with these days. And um, any of you guys that are stuck at home these days, um, there's so many household items that make awesome sounds. I'm a big fan of found percussion. So anything that you find around the house, you can use as an instrument. Make sure you ask your parents first. If you are kids and um, you don't want to start banging on everything, you want to kind of ask your parents if it's something that they have that you can bang on. Um, let's see. Most days, I drink tea. Um, I really I drink tea out of a wide mouth mason jar, um, usually a pint size these days. Most days, and um, a lot of these days, I end up playing music on these jars as well. Um, I think that a nice ginger, rose hip, Tulsi infusion really works well. And um, a little dab of local honey makes the water a little bit heavier. So whenever you get to shift the water around onto the head, then you get a little bit cooler of a sound. And it just plays a little bit better. Um, besides shaking the water in there or adding some sort of grain, which I'll um, probably make some sort of shaker found percussion video here soon. Besides doing that type of thing, and besides just hitting the open jars full of water. So you could play with that type of sound, but besides those two styles of playing, I really like it to where you have just a pint sized wide mouth mason jar and you can move the water around. So in that case, the main playing surface is the lid. And the main striking implement is your finger, the last two pads of your fingers. And what we want to do, the sweet spot of any drum or lid is about halfway in between the center and the edge. So that's where we want to try to get this sound. It's a nice full sound. If we play in the middle, we'll notice you have that, that ping sound. Which is a cool sound to play with, but to get the main basic sound, we just want to get right in between there. And then once we feel good at doing that with the index finger, we can try it with the other fingers as well. So we can go back and forth between two different fingers and things like that. Um, what makes this so fun is once you can start to manipulate or modulate the sound with the water. You can get a bunch of sounds like that. Again, you can play with it. That's kind of as deep as you can go. And then that's as high as you can go. Um, it's got a lot of cool sounds you can do. Um, so I recommend playing with that. Another way that you can do it is with, if you have a non-wide mouth mason jar of any size, and you can play it more like an udu. And um, you got to kind of have a big enough hand, but you can... And you could probably put water in it that way, but I always spill it on myself, so I don't really do that much. And um, that's kind of like an udu, which is a Nigerian clay pot drum. And um, again, with this, the more you can play with the water. Hit it when it's open, and then turn it like that. See what that sounds like. Hit it when it's closed, and then open it up like that. Or just experimenting with it. That boom. 
that fluid sound in the tabla and the ganjira of um, Indian music is called a gumak or a gumaki, which the sound bends, the pitch bends because you bend the head of the drum. Here we're not bending the head of the drum, we're manipulating how much water is touching the head of the drum. Another thing that you can do is use the lid as a shaker. You got to be careful the lid doesn't fly out. I really like that sound as well. And then you can also put together a kit. So here or our five quart size mason jars. And you can hear the loose lid on those, but that one you hear that tighter sound, which means that it's been suctioned a lot of times. So you gotta loosen it up a little bit. Sometimes you have to pop it back out from the bottom if you want to get that. And playing with your hands is cool, but I like to play with, say, chopsticks. What I did to get a softer sound, I was trying to go for like an Indonesian gamelan feel with these, and I got, I put some moleskin, kind of like for hiking with blisters. And I put moleskin at the end of these, so it gives it a little bit different sound. So you can get that sound. An easy way to do that if you don't have chopsticks at the house is some pencils. Using the eraser end probably is going to sound nicer. So you can play around like that. And my favorite ones that I've been using with these are these door stops. I just took them off some door stops and put them on chopsticks. So again, you have this little sound here and it's more like a mallet. And one thing, you can get one rhythm going with one hand and just leave that as an ostinato. And then you can do a different rhythm with the other hand. play around with that. You can also just play any type of rhythm or syncopated that gets into your body. Like we'll see what comes out of my body right now. And just play around and have fun. I hope that this gives you some fun, inspirational ways to make music with mason jars. If you are one of Mr. Fixmer's students, I really do look forward to seeing your video responses here, as well as your video responses to the mason jar music. And um, let me know if you have any questions, or if there's anything that um, is coming up, or any type of um, thing that you would like. Um, I'll probably do a couple more found percussion things here, because it's right up my alley. So. Um, Either way, I hope you guys are staying healthy and having fun. Take care.